I mm-hmm. really love you, and I want to play you for your heart. Post up, mm-hmm. bitch! Like, really? <laughs> I'm gonna do it! Hello, everybody, and welcome to Sips and Scripts, the podcast where we make a cocktail and talk about one of our favorite films from the past and present. My name is Taylor Rose, and I'm an entertainment blogger at InMyTheater.com. I'm Terrell Bernard, film enthusiast and part-time gamer. Follow me on Instagram at T underscore rail underscore B. And I am Kirsten Jackson. I am a blogger and cocktail influencer at lowcountrysocialite.com. Welcome to our show, guys. Woo-woo! I'm going to pass it on off to the lead host for today, Terrell, to talk about what we're going to be talking about this morning. All right. Well, this morning we will be talking about a hood classic by the name of Love and Basketball. Is it really a hood classic? I was say, now wait, I don't know about a hood say, classic. What? How is it not a hood classic? I would say that it's it's black cinema, but I wouldn't call it hood classic. Hood <laughs> classic would be like Dead Presidents or like you know, hood classic. Isn't it? Because I really don't think I've seen Dead President. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I'm about to say, you don't see. <laughs> hood, de- hood, hood classic, hood classic um, would be classic. like, gen- yeah, would be like um, Boys in the Hood. No, yeah, that ain't no hood classic. You have to in the hood no, for it to be a hood classic? That is not, that is not a hood classic. Yes, classic. it has to at least portray hood life. No, what? a hood classic. Oh my God, Kayla, those- what is a hood classic? Hood classics are those movies that come on Amazon. Those ones that was filmed on a iPhone 8. Those are hood classics. No, ma'am. Yes, they are. Those are hood <laughs> Those are bootlegs. <laughs> no, they, they go down and they take out their iPhone 8. Bootleg movies are when you uh, go to the movie theater with your video camera. Hood right, classics that's a bootleg. are when... Hood you wrote the script on your mama's kitchen counter on a napkin and got your homeboys oh. together. No, those are like, jank films. Film this movie, okay. Oh, I'm sorry. No, that is no, that is incorrect. Those are jank oh, films. Lord. Lord. Hood I classics mean, are are classic movies that portray hood life and speak to people from the hood. No. Okay. Yes. Hood classics are black movies okay, wait, now, Kirsten, right. that weren't Kirsten, successful right. in the movie theater, but are adorned by black people. Okay. No. So those are sleeper hits. Sleeper hits? No. That is a okay. sleeper hit. Like, if it, it does not do well in the movie theater, or it doesn't do well in the movie theater, but it does well, like, when it leaves. So, it because, you know, I like to be so black. I said, because I like to be thorough, I did look up what a hood classic movie is, and Kirsten okay. happens to be right. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I, okay, hold on. I just want to take a few minutes to really bask <laughs> in the glory of being correct. It is wonderful over here. You guys, that's right. Okay. So, you got, you got what is the, what is the definition of a hood classic? Kayla Rose. Okay, so I don't have the official definition, but when you Google hood classics, we're going to get movies like Lean on Me, He Got Gay, (laughs) Baby Boy, Uh Coach Carter, ATL, so Boys in the Hood, Hayden Full, Get Rich, Die Trying, so if we just took on those list of movies, Love and Basketball would definitely be a popular Mm, I don't. I still just. I feel love like and basketball good, is it's is black hood. cinema. That's what yeah. I would. I would not call it a hood classic. I would call it black. Wouldn't call it a hood classic. If it come on BET and VH1 every week, it's a hood classic. <laughs> no, no, it's a it's a it's black cinema. Well, you're so whatever it is. Wow! You know what? <laughs> People lose arguments and they attack the other their opponent. You know what I'm saying? That's, <laughs> that's crazy. That's crazy. I thought we were better than that. Terrell, you my, you're my brother. I mean, really? Okay. All right. You right. You right. You right. <laughs> and being right is so wonderful. Let, let me tell you about it, man. <laughs> Lord. <laughs> Terrell. 
That's how really you know you're rarely ever right. When you have to wow. Be- oh, see, I see we back to taking jabs at each other. <laughs> Fighting words up in here, y'all. Anyway, w- welcome to our show. We are going to discuss love and basketball, the black cinema slash hood classic. <laughs> <laughs> It's a it's a classic in my hood. True. First of all, that you know what that might be the problem. You ain't from the hood, so you don't Ooh. know. <laughs> oh, to be honest with you, I mean, we're gonna get into this when we talk about the film. They wasn't in the hood, nah. Thank you. They were. They were well to do. One was really well to do, and one was just like middle class. So I guess technically, if you wanna go there. Mm-hmm. Anywho. <laughs> Thank you. And I was, you know, I was thinking, and I, 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 I don't want to get ahead of ourselves, but I was like, how are they living in the same neighborhood? But I, I guess Question. I was like, oh, I can tell his, you. his dad wasn't a like superstar player. He was just on a team. His yeah, dad yeah, wasn't living yeah. there forever. Uh-huh. Remember, his Remember, daddy wasn't living there the whole time. Forever. Well, we are gonna talk about it. Yes, yeah. <laughs> don't talk about it. Mm-hmm. Um. So before we get into it, what's everybody up to this week? Um, Kayla, what you working on this week? Um. So I have another Clifford campaign to do. So nice. Be Did the- you ever open up that chocolate box and send me some goodies? Um. It was uh those little red bean candies in there. Mm-hmm. Um. So if you would go down to your local Dollar Tree. Wow! 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 <laughs> Par- <laughs> it was it was it Paramount? Is that who the, that film is through? Paramount. It is. So Paramount sent you a nice box of goodies. Yes, they and did. I gotta walk down to my local dollar store yes. to get some goodies. I can't even trust that you will send me some. That's real rude. Oh, I'm so sorry. That's okay. Well, okay. well, you can always enter the giveaway um, of some swag. Okay. Will you be sharing the giveaway on your platform? Your I social? Will. I surely, okay. surely shall. That should go out sometime this week. Nice. Nice. Okay, cool. Um, Terrell, what you working on? I am uh, nothing really. Just working. And I'm working on... um. A campaign for breast cancer and also one for um um the the Biden presidency. So <laughs> oh, okay. oh, interesting. Okay. okay. Yeah, just um so I mean there's there are small campaigns, but they're pretty cool. So to uh pair with our feature film Love and Basketball, we are going to make something very old school. A drink that you should only drink in college. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, let me back that up. You know huh? <laughs> right. You know what what incredible you... Hulk. Yeah. Incredible Hulk. <laughs> Listen, man, Incredible Hulk was good back then, <laughs> but because a, a a large portion of our film takes place in college, um, we are going to make an amaretto sour. <laughs> yeah. yeah and now okay so amaretto sour you can make it like really elite like a lot of people make it with an egg white and like use like <clears throat> top shelf um spirits but we're gonna make an old school college style amaretto sour that you order in a crowded club mm-hmm. back in <laughs> Back in the nineties, sorry, Kayla, just cl- cover oh. your ears, baby. Oh, yeah, yeah baby. Whatever. <laughs> so, so, what you speak of? Yeah, <laughs> I know, baby. Lord, uh. So, with this, you don't even need like a shaker or anything because you're not using an egg white. Um, you can just start it in the glass with some fresh ice. Um. Pour about three ounces of amaretto liqueur, um, two ounces of sweet and sour mix. Top it with some Sprite and garnish it with some cherries, maybe some orange slices. Easy peasy. That sounds so um, disgusting. Huh? You sound so disgusting. 
it, it you know i'm not sours are good they just old school we used to order them back in legends in statesboro georgia georgia oh, oh, not legends. <laughs> legends baby <laughs> oh wow oh wow yeah <laughs> so <laughs> Well, yeah, um, that's old school right there. Shout out to uh, Georgia Southern. Um, <laughs> shout out to my wife. She's still drinking. Yes, yes. It's so <laughs> funny to go to the restaurant with her when she orders Amrita Sour and they look at her like, What is that? <laughs> um, I guess we'll have to go back in the vault and get these ingredients and um, the. And also the the recipe that is written on a piece of old parchment <laughs> rolled right. up in a scroll. <laughs> Did you guys hear um, Georgia Southern? Uh, I guess I say Georgia Southern because that's the biggest pool, but Statesboro is no longer a dry county. What? Yeah, yeah. you can now buy <laughs> <liquor>. <laughs> air horns. Yeah. Really? Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> they got a new mayor. When did that happen? What? Very recently, like within the last month. Wow! So, wow! If uh, anyone wants to donate about fifty thousand dollars for us to open up a liquor store, um, please email us at because uh, whoever <laughs> gonna do it gonna get rich, <laughs> rich. <laughs> Somebody owe me fifty thousand dollars now for all the gas I use driving to the county line. Okay, so you know if anybody <laughs> wants to. Yeah! Wow! That wow! That is fascinating. Because mm-hmm. mm-hmm. it, it wow. made no sense. Uh-huh. Like that? Yeah, you right. Yeah, that made no sense. But that's okay. Look at that. Okay, time do bring a lot of change. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. All right. Well, <clears throat> speaking of college. Let's get into our film. Um, so, Terrell, we are going to throw it over to you. And so you can share why this film speaks to you. It definitely does speak to me. Uh, here we go. All right. Here we go. Love and basketball. Great film. I love it. Uh, it's my go-to film. I watched it plenty of times. Had the DVD. Lost the DVD, <laughs> bought the DVD again, lost that DVD. Oh, that's funny. Uh, so I had to rank it. <laughs> <laughs> God. So, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, this film stars Sanaa Lathan as uh, Monica Wright. Uh, the okay. younger Monica is played by Kyla Pratt. Can we talk Monica? about how amazing Kyla Pratt is? I yes, know. Yes, Kyla Pratt is this whole cast was phenomenal. Phenomenal. Yeah, it was really great cast. Was phenomenal. Yeah. And like, I yeah. well, I we'll get into it. I am not the hugest fan of Tyra Banks, but she was excellent in this movie. Yes. Yeah, her small part, she was much. really cute. <laughs> yeah, was like, it was really yes. adorable. I like that. Why are you not a fan of Tyra Banks? She oh, me? She just weird girl vibes to me. That's all. I love her. I love her. And like, she wasn't the greatest person in America's Next Top Model. So, you know. Yeah, th- those episodes did not really age well. Like, some of the not stuff she had those girls do is like, not would be extremely problematic now. But I, I love Tyra. I, I think like, Tyra is just, she's like tall and beautiful, but also, kooky mm-hmm. so like i i like that she seems like a beautiful yeah, she's kooky like qu- like she's you know silly and just kind of kooky and so i feel like that would be like a beautiful girl that you could actually be friends with you know what i'm saying mm-hmm. oh okay so she seems down to earth she's yeah she well, yeah, like, seems like you like she's who just be too above hanging out with right she really did Fit in. She regular, everyday fit in anywhere. Huh? <laughs> yeah, yeah, like that. Like she, she seems like, oh, she was just, she's just stunningly gorgeous. But you could also like, she could throw on some jeans and y'all could go. It was to me, it was totally believable that she would date a basketball player and like actually be interested in him. Yeah. Okay. Nice. 
Yeah, since she was only in the movie for like two minutes, but yeah. Thank you yeah, not to say, oh, right hey. <laughs> 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 yeah. uh, that is what the funniest scene to me when like she's in that hospital room and she's right. Oh, hey. mm -hmm. <laughs> like, you, you ain't see me standing over here. Oh, hey. <laughs> like, what? Right, and then saying "oh hi" with the with the ring out, jiggling the finger. I was like, "Okay, <laughs> we got it. You winning right now." Yeah. Right. And then I was like, "Yeah, she definitely looked like." Remember that that Barbie movie she was in? I was like, "Yeah, she Life looked size. like." Yes, I love that movie too. It's, I, I think it's cute. Oh hi! No, yeah, yeah that's just it. Reminds Never me of seen. huh? Never seen it. Well, I would hope not. <laughs> Wait I mean, hey, now. but if you're into like Barbie movies, I wouldn't. I wouldn't hate on that. Thank you. I would roast it though, but I would hate on it. Thank you're that being hurts. problematic. <laughs> <laughs> it's my comfort zone. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so Terrell, fi finish leading yes. us through your infatuation with this movie, and. For those of you who don't know, Terrell was a little <clears throat> basketball star in high school, so that's why he loved this movie. Uh oh, yes, because I love love and I love basketball. So there we go. All right, my two nerves oh, combined right. to make one. <laughs> oh yeah, okay. I anywho, carry on. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, the uh, casting on here is phenomenal. It has uh, Alfred Woodard, Dennis Haybird. Boris Kojo, Gabrielle Union, Regina Hall, just a bunch of great actors and actresses um, that you see, you still see today. They're still around. They're still putting out uh, good projects and stuff like that. So, Yeah, agree. Absolutely. But this movie is broken up into four quarters, which I like. Um, it's because it's like a game of life. You go yeah. through the first part of your life. That's the first quarter. Second quarter, you're a little older. You're starting. To, things are starting to move for you. Uh, then you go into the third quarter of your life. You're uh, either coming into adulthood or a full grown adult, and you're you're trying to make strides in your life, trying to do different things, uh, go after your goals, set mm -hmm. yourself up for the fourth quarter. Which yeah. is not the end of your life, but you living through every put you in position in the first three quarters. Okay, so, yeah, I was wondering where you were going with that. Like fourth quarter, you die. So okay, <laughs> <laughs> no fourth quarter, you enjoy. You enjoy. Okay, the fourth yeah, yeah, no, I'm, I'm following you. And I, 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 I now I was just listening. I was like, I hadn't thought of that. I guess that. That film is broken up into four quarters, like basketball. It's like a basketball game. That's pretty cool. Okay, look at you, Terrell. All right. Okay. Take us on through this to on this voyage. Go ahead. He is preaching today. Okay. Man, I, man, he's giving us a word. I, 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 <laughs> and I definitely want to give a shout out to the writer and director of this film, um, which is Gina Price Blythewood, um, black woman. Um Produced by Spike Lee and Sam Kidd. Uh, so it's all in all, this is a black production. It's put out by uh, New Line Cinema, but mm -hmm. uh, it, the production company is 40 Acres and a Middle Film Work, which is uh, Spike Lee's uh, production company. So it, it's definitely got the fingerprints of blackness all over the film. Okay. It's yeah. Awesome yeah. Story. Yeah, Absolutely. yeah. This film, this film is super duper black, mm -hmm. and um, and not yeah. in a bad, way, in a in a great black excellence way, which yeah, I, yeah. I thoroughly enjoyed. Really, Terrell, not black, in, not black in a bad way. <laughs> That's I mean, because you see other and movies what is black in a bad way. Us, it is, yeah, it's not boys. Wait, uh, so even though it was a great film, Minister Society. You don't see anyone fighting in this film. You do see some things that aren't as savory as you would like. But at overall, this is a very wholesome film. I show mm -hmm. this film to my child, and I don't have to worry about, except for one scene, uh, anything that's inappropriate that he shouldn't see. Were they uh, uh, Quincy and... Uh, oh, Monica were they doing for the first time? Oh, okay, yeah. but that was still a very G P a PG rated scene. Yeah, well, yeah. you know, Land Landon is nine, so oh, but, but, but I so, like to show him the classics. 
And but you know, but I, you're right though, and I feel like. Yeah, you might not show that scene to him now, but yeah. maybe in a couple of years you could. It, that scene was real; it was calm. Yeah. And but but I respect that scene, and I liked it a lot. Me too. And um, yes. I feel like because you know when you watch movies, you like they t- they'll show like first times being all romantic and beautiful, and yeah. but this one was awkward. It was sweaty. <laughs> she still her whole mouth was still wet from him kissing her. Um, they pulled out a condom and they show her face and how it kind of hurt the first time. And I was like, okay, that, that was like, it could get, I, I would say. And I, I respected that scene. That was really cool. Yeah. Uh, meets Quincy for the first time and they play a little basketball with his friends and Quincy doesn't like to lose. So Quincy is a little foul and pushes Monica, which I like how they incorporated the actual scar that Stanley Lathan has on her face into her character and being, that's how she got that scar. The scar came from Quincy. It, how did that nice happen? Touch. Like, yeah. okay, that scar. Mm-hmm. I was watching that scene and I, I've seen this scene a million times and I never thought about it, but I was like, he pushed her and it cut her face. I was like, what did she cut her face on? That hard ass grass they got out of the <laughs> hard ass grass that grass will get you every time maybe there, rock, maybe there was a rock in the grass I was or like, dang, they could at least put a damn rock down there so <laughs> like, damn, like, how did it what did she cut her face on so deep that it scarred her for the rest of her life but there was nothing there I was like nah they could have done that a little bit better cause that was so extra nobody yeah, thought about that but it gives the character you like okay <laughs> Especially when they go to the second quarter and you see her standing there on the free throw line with the same scar. Yeah, oh, I'm, not, I'm saying that the scar, the, the concept of the scar is, is cool, but mm-hmm. like, yeah, she got it. yeah that, was, that was better. not a complete, that wasn't complete. Okay. Oh, because okay. I was, I was, I was looking at, I was good. God, there's a lot of blood. I was looking for <laughs> like a damn machete down there. <laughs> That's funny. And it was nothing but some damn fresh lush grass and I was well, good God what she cut herself on you know hey, I sometimes that grass is hard to that at all huh I said I have never paid attention to that at all yeah I, I don't know what like rewatching these films like now to do these episodes I look at stuff in mm-hmm. a different way and like look closer and yeah like I said I've seen this scene a million times but um I was like what the hell did she cut her face on yeah mm-hmm. true mm-hmm. And another yeah. thing about this film yeah. that is so enjoyable to me is the music they used from the time period. It was accurate. It was mm-hmm. what would have been going on during that time period. This Yo, the soundtrack Kendrick, is wonderful. Yeah. Love it. Love it. Yeah. Oh, it had Aretha, MC Light, Maxwell. Like it was it was a good um like progression of music. Like come going from the eighties to the nineties to the two thousands. It, it yeah, that was really great. Yes. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, can we talk about how cute they're um like I, I really like Kyla Pratt in this movie. Um yes. I, one, I think she's just the cutest. Um mm-hmm. and and still is. She's still super cute. Um yes. but how and when they're going to school and he's like, Well, yeah, I guess we ought to, you know, you should be my girl. And I thought it was so cute how transactional their little relationship was. And he was like, um, I think we should kiss now. She was okay. And he was like, I think I have to bring you flowers. And she was like, I don't like flowers. Uh, what about Twinkies? <laughs> oh, like, that is so cute. <laughs> yeah, and then they kicked each other's ass. And that was yeah, that was cute too. <laughs> Yeah, it was really adorable. I loved it. That was a um, great part. Yeah. But yeah, so like you said, that was basically the first quarter for them. Uh, them meeting, uh, they, they became, they stayed friends. They lived right next door to each other going in high school, which was the second quarter. They both are on the basketball team, um, both doing well. She's trying to get recruited. Uh, and uh, she has a a little anger issue, if you would say. And especially during that time, being a woman, I think they looked at it more harshly than they would now about mm-hmm. how she would act. Because I agree with her. I'm not doing differently than what she would see her doing. And uh, I right. believe that they were kind of signaling her out just because of her passion for the game. She was very passionate mm-hmm. about what she was doing. 
Right. Yeah, I think they tried to knock her for that. Yeah. I'd have yeah. to agree. I think a lot of this, um, um, they actually touch gender norms and stuff. Um, a lot in this movie. Yeah. Um, I, 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 I'm gonna go ahead and put it out there if you can't tell. <laughs> I don't know, know shit about basketball. Um, <laughs> surprise, surprise. <laughs> yeah. So to anyone listening, I don't know. I'm, I'm not the basketball as expert here. That would be Terrell. And Kay- Kayla, do you watch basketball? Watch basketball? No, but I played basketball and my brother was also a basketball star in high school. So I don't know how you played. No, you were, were you on the basketball team? Um, I was on the basketball team up until high school. I um I didn't do anything in high school for real but sing on chorus, but I was in basketball from a little tiny child up into middle school. Okay. Oh wow, nice. Okay. Yeah, I hate basketball. So um no, don't don't say that. That's not true. It's true. I'm sorry. I just don't I don't like it. I <laughs> I don't I don't like it. Um <laughs> and well, Taylor, getting, what, what position did you play oh, when you did play? Guard. Guard. Okay, so you was nice. You was handling the rock. Okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah. What? <laughs> it, oh my uh, goodness! I wasn't great at it. But start there. I used to foul out a lot, guys, and um, it's very traumatic experience for myself. Oh. <laughs> what? <laughs> I don't know, like, you guys started talking Greek. I don't know what, what you're guys. Oh, it's, it's okay. Fouling out is when you. I know uh, what a foul is. <laughs> oh, when you were that guy, you didn't know. So I was right. trying to explain it to you. <laughs> a foul, a foul is when you like are, like are too aggressive. Well, there's lots of different fouls, be right? You can foul be, like. Be, be, huh? What be? Okay, I'm sorry. I was also a cheerleader. <laughs> Oh, apparently, apparently, okay. Um, <laughs> but you you can foul out by being too aggressive, or like you can. Oh, shit, that's the only one I know. Yeah, you, you can go out of bounds. Too aggressive. That's a foul. Get your angry ass off my court. I mean, I don't know. <laughs> that is <laughs> well, I. Oh, but back to the gender norms. Yeah, it it was like you know men are encouraged to be aggressive and she was right um women are encouraged to act like a lady and so yeah um throughout in your basketball career did you experience any of that like yeah things that you were expected as opposed to like your fellow basketball players like women who played for the the high school too um no it was the women on the basketball team um they were treated basically the same as the men mm-hmm. i mean uh there wasn't really much of a difference that i could see now probably behind the scenes stuff that i didn't see it could have been differently but uh i remember something my coach used to say that used to bother me like we'd sit and support and you know try to watch watch their games because mm-hmm. uh during that time a lot of people weren't coming to watch uh females play or uh, women play at all. So sit by and he come by. Uh, what are y'all doing? Uh, watching this game. Y'all need to get ready for y'all game. Watching a girl's game is like watching watching paint dry. <gasps> like, like yeah. why would you say That's that? Right. Like they're playing. We're all on the same, basically the same thing. It's the team. There's wow. a uh, That's girls terrible. team and a boys team. Yeah, I, I didn't think this- that was cool of him to say, but yeah. Mm-hmm. And that's been something that you can see um, right now to this present day about how um, women in basketball do not get paid the same because they, I mean, people just don't view it the same as men playing basketball, which sucks because I think that women's basketball games are a lot um, funner to watch. Yeah, really? You you enjoy watching women's basketball more than you enjoy like watching men's basketball? Yes, but it's also probably because I'm a little gay. (laughs) (laughs) Well, yeah, I guess that would do it. (laughs) (laughs) Well, (laughs) well, okay, then that yeah. Well, I I don't enjoy watching any basketball, so um, yeah, that that counts me out. But I that's interesting that you led in that direction, though, Terrell, because I was going to ask you, um, is it typical? 
for male teams to support um, the girls teams um, in solidarity when watching them. Because I do remember in high school, because we went to high school together. Um, mm-hmm. I remember there, like if I would go to one of your games and if like I would stay after school, of course, you know, you'd have to watch JV and then the girls and then you guys. And there would not be a lot of supporters at those games before that. But then, you know, the men's, the guys team. Mm -hmm. Yeah, people start calling in. So you guys would kind of stick around in solidarity and watch the other teams play? Yeah, I did. I did personally. And a few of my teammates did as well. I mean, it was just support. You mean, you see, go to the same school, you play in the same sport. It's... Mm -hmm. An hour before your game, you don't have to do much. You go to the back, you, you get suited up, you get ready, you stretch, and then you just go and and, and watch them play. The, right, the right, okay, um, cool. Yeah, I um, I guess you know it's like stuff that you do as a child or like a teenager. You just don't really think about the impact of it, and so yeah, I guess you know you just didn't think about that then but yeah those teams needed that support so that's pretty cool that you guys supported them as mm-hmm. you guys being the star players that you guys supported them um let's take a few minutes and talk about um the mom character played by alfrey woodard um Ooh. or actually we can talk about both of the moms let's do that um alfrey woodard's um character she is more um kind of the homemaker type mm-hmm. um i think that they both did not work but she was more yeah. like she baked and and you know took care of the household and cleaned and stuff as opposed to q's mom who mm-hmm. um she you know she didn't really bake and cook and all that stuff but she still took care of the household mm-hmm. um and then you know unfortunately has to deal with his infidelity and stuff like that. So what did y'all think about those characters? The two individually or, you know, as opposed to each other? Like, what do y'all think about those characters? I believe that Alfre Woodard could do like literally no wrong on any character she ever plays. She's really great. (laughs) She embodies, she embodies it. Now, to me, she was she was the mother who just wanted everything. Um, she she took Sonal Lathan's uh little attitude with a grain of salt. She really um <laughs> she I don't know how to explain how perfect she acted in this movie. Yeah. It gave a real authentic black mothering experience for me personally. Yeah. I definitely enjoyed how it was like um they're both mothers, but they do it differently. Uh, mm-hmm. they, like you said, one was the homemaker type. The other one was the, I get stuff done, but I'm still going to be fabulous and, and live a lifestyle that I enjoy while taking care of the household. Um, Quincy was closer with his mother. Um, uh, Monica was because I don't mm-hmm. think she felt her mother understood her and they right. really touched on that as uh, Monica went to an adult uh, even when she was at her games uh, at her high school game and Monica had uh, gotten into, gotten a tech and had to sit out of the game she, you can hear her in the stands Monica, Monica just like you <laughs> see <her. laughs> mm-hmm. can you do that one more time <laughs> <laughs> that was funny. <laughs> She's like, Monica, yeah, Monica. Yeah. I mean, which is what you would see your mother do. Like, if you acted yeah. a fool, like, oh, I, I can't believe my child is out here acting this way. So, yeah, that mm-hmm. was. And you yeah. didn't really see Quincy's mother at his game. I didn't. I don't think I ever saw her at his game. Yeah, I don't, yeah, I don't think she was. Yeah, yeah. Now that you mention it. Unless there was, I missed. Yeah, he was a star player, so I mean, pretty sure he would have wanted her support. Um, you know, you 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 wanted your parents to see you do good, um, in in anything that you were doing. So just to have that support from a parent, even if you weren't, 
you know, acting in a way that was something that your parents wanted to see. It was good to see that they were there to support you. Right, right. I I think that it was interesting to see these two kids be parented in different ways and and um supported by their moms and dads in um different ways. I thought um one scene that really stood out to me as far as with um <clears throat> with Alfred Wood's character um they when uh um Monica um played by Sanai like them was sitting on the bed and she was getting dressed and um for the dance and she her mom was like you know you just don't worry about anything just worry about being beautiful or pretty or something mm -hmm. and like the the this look of shock just registered on Sanai's well Monica's face um I thought that scene was acted out really well um mm -hmm. she was like literally shocked that her mom thought she was beautiful and yeah. it just made me think about how you know you have to be careful like the things that you put into people every day the things that you say because i'm you know her mom raised her from birth of course mm -hmm. but it was a complete shock to her that she her mom thought she was beautiful mm -hmm. um and it probably i'm pretty sure you know her mom did not think that she was ugly but she just never said it she always just talked about how she was a tomboy she didn't yeah. want to wear dresses she didn't want to wear hair mm -hmm. certain ways she didn't want to you know act like a typical normal girl um mm -hmm. but she never took the time to really talk about her beauty um and i i feel like that is a typical interaction between mothers and daughters especially in that decade and i think maybe now more so we're starting to see the beauty in other aspects of life not in just looks we we talk about the beauty of strength and just you know maybe the fact that if, if she was raising monica in this decade maybe she would consider it beautiful that she can play basketball so well yeah. so i thought that was an interesting scene um also um and then for q and his dad it was so interesting, like when this movie starts to take a deep dive into trashdom, um, oh, led by Q. <laughs> oh, a Lord. deep dive into being a trash character. Um, Q, who grew up idolizing his dad, like yes. his dad was everything he wanted to be, and then you know his dad kind of makes one mistake. And actually, what? it was just one visible mistake because he had been making a slew of mistakes, but, you know, um, yeah, he had been covering it up caught. really well. <laughs> right. He finally got caught. So, and then he but just... Was he really covering it up very well? Do you think she just played like, I don't know what's going on instead oh, of, I know what's going on, but used to this lifestyle and I really don't want to give it up right now? Who, the dad? Who? No, he's talking no, about No, the, the, the mother. Yeah, um, I I think that, and I I I am gonna step out on limb here and say I've been in that situation where you it's easier to tell yourself that things are going well than to actually face what's going on in front of you. Mm -hmm. So you're probably just living in the euphoria of the love that they once had, and mm -hmm. and lying to herself, and just just being like you know there's nothing like overtly in my face so i can lie to myself and be like things are okay even though in the back of my mind i know something is not right but right. then you have this paternity suit come up which is like you, you can't ignore that and it's and like it's time to face it now and he was a huge player mm -hmm. so like you it's one thing you embarrass me in our house but it's a different thing you embarrass me out here in the street there you go yeah, that's, that's the one. That's that's it. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And I I just thought it was interesting to watch Q turn into his dad. Mm -hmm. Like even <laughs> he did not stay there. And and um, we don't know how actually we don't know how that ended because we only get 
the film kind of stops at their romance still being kind of in, in marriage or whatever, still being kind of young. Um, so maybe over time he might, you know, have some of those characteristics of his dad. But I, it looked like he got that out of his system. Mm-hmm. But um, I like I, I, I want to believe that he did. Um, but like, I mean, do you remember the, the? I will. I don't know. We don't know. I'm talking mm-hmm. about like over time, like in right, like like yeah. 2021. What's going on with yeah. the Q and Monica? Do he got a baby on the way <laughs> with an Instagram model? <laughs> oh lord! But but Q, y'all remember the scene in the dorm room before Monica Calhoun's character comes in, and mm-hmm. uh, Monica comes in and she's like, you know, where you been? And he was like. Oh, I had a meeting with a guy, which is the same yeah. thing that his dad used to tell his mom. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. So, so I thought that was like, interesting how they brought that full circle. My thing was they were childhood sweethearts, regardless if they believed they were sweethearts um, up until college. You know, they were just child. They loved each other. The thing was, it is so much like when we go to college and we start experiencing new things, we think things are going to last in the way that they always have, and they just didn't. So my whole thing was, I'm kind of glad they broke up and then found each other again, because it was just like, you do need to go out there and experience things. It was just the way in which he did it that was like, okay, you have to be an ass like that, because she missed, what, one practice? No, no, no. What was it? She couldn't make, she had to make her curfew curfew. and he was really going through it. And I'm just like, but would he have done the same for her? He bro, he he was like, I would. And I was like, no, you wouldn't. I don't don't think he would either. But I think he was going, a lot had just been put on him and he was like, this is my rock. This is who I go to lean on when Uh things are chaotic. And then all of a sudden your rock is like, well, I uh, I got other things to do. You have to find at this time because my whole thing. Mm. Well, things are going Monica up for me. Barely made it on the team. No, wait, that was no, no. I'm I'm going too far. Never mind. Um, my thing is, if y'all are there on scholarship, baby, I'm not missing my curfew. You can call me on the phone. I oh yeah, she was, she was not wrong for denying him that time. She was not no, wrong. She wasn't. But, but I, I will just, say. In his uh, defense, in his defense, even though he dips into trash them with that, it, all all his whole in. support. Is, no, no, he put the whole. He was up to his torso in trash. <laughs> um, but his whole support system kind of yeah. failed him at a time where he needed it most. Like, yeah, you know, he had idolized his dad. His dad let him down. He was counting on Monica. Monica did not have the time. You know, all all that was left really was his mom, but his mom was like a crying drunk mess. So mm-hmm. he really just had himself and it was like, you. he was starting to self-medicate with the alcohol and then also yeah. with like, with the girls Women. and mm-hmm. it was just a lot. Now, and I'm not making excuses for his behavior, but I can see how that can kind of like snowball into his um, actions. But yeah, I was like, girl, I'm I'm glad that this was a film that showed a woman, you know, being hurt by, you know, her, you know, childhood sweetheart, you know, being stupid. But she moved on, went on about her business, made a career for herself, and mm-hmm. to and then then came back and decided if it was for her or not. And I was like, that now that is a really cool trajectory for this story to to go in. Mm-hmm. I agree. I definitely agree with that. They definitely uh, let her. She her life kept uh, growing. She was able to play uh, basketball overseas because I like how during that time they actually show you how difficult it was for a woman to continue to play basketball once they left college. Like the only yeah. place to play during that time period was overseas. Like right. one of the greatest women basketball players ever, uh, Cheryl Miller, never got a chance to play um, 
professional basketball in the United States. And mm-hmm. he was as a, as a right. basketball player, not even just as a woman basketball player, as a basketball player, period. He mm-hmm. could play. Yeah. Yeah. And just showing how that it's difficult during that time to, you want the life of playing basketball professionally, but you're missing things like your family. You're not in the States anymore. You don't understand the language. It's, it yeah. was just so many different barriers. And I like how they really touched on that during the film. Yeah. I have to agree. I, I thought that that was interesting too, because I felt like this film could have been lazy and been like, oh, she graduated college and then she immediately went into the WNBA. But that's not typical of women basketball players in the United States. They right. showed her going overseas and, and the, you know, like Terrell said, like the struggles with that. Um, what do y'all think about that scene where it was like she was, um, she, they were taught, the coach was talking in um, Italian and, mm-hmm. and they were like, she was, she was like, what'd he say? And they were like, he said, pass the ball to you. And I was like, is that because she black? Like, was that some blackness? <laughs> what, what was no, she was, she was, was a great player. player. She was the best yeah, player. She's the best player. Yeah. I like, felt yeah. like it might have been because of that, but it also could have been because, oh, we got us a Negro on our team now. Oh, and Lord. you know, they can play some ball. No, not at all. Not at all. This time. No, not this time. (laughs) Not this time. That's funny though. (laughs) I'm not saying it as a uh, as like I'm I'm just saying she was their she was their best it was the championship game. Uh huh. Mm -hmm. It was the championship game. So she definitely was the best player. Lead them to the yeah. If you were trying to win, pass, if she's scoring all the points, pass her the ball. Don't nobody else touch it unless you're passing it to her. Oh, God. <laughs> Don't do it. To Is that yourself. typical advice that coaches give if they have a star player? Pass the ball to them. Absolutely. Yes. Uh, ever heard of Michael Jordan? It was, it was I like, mean, was that the advice the that was given? <laughs> pass, it, pass it to Jordan. Pass yes. the ball and get out of his way. <laughs> yes, literally, like that is literally the advice they give. Like you know, you know, we want to win this game. You know the person who's gonna make it happen. It's gonna be this. Now, when I played in, um, when I played in middle school, there was literally one girl. Her dad was the basketball coach. She was the best player on our team. She single handedly won every single game for us. We were undefeated. And did her dad <laughs> get up in front of y'all children and be like, pass my child a ball and get out of her way. Good game. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Absolutely. She if we wanted to win, if we wanted to win, pass her the ball and get out of her way. <laughs> Lord have mercy. I don't think there was okay. a single person on the basketball team who was better than her. She did go on. I think she plays for the Harlem Globetrotters now. Um, oh, but she did go on nice. to play, I think, at Notre Dame. Um, so yeah. Oh wow! Okay, so, yeah, like literally, it happens. <laughs> okay, I love, listen. I know nothing about basketball, so I figured it was a legit question. Mm. Um, I got you. I tell you what. Since, since y'all don't want to go down the racism road with me, that's cool. Uh-oh. How about we talk about how gross it was about Boris Kujo going to that damn high school dance? Girl. <laughs> that, that was, was like, that scene was okay. almost disgusting. But that okay. happened. You know. Huh? College, college kids coming back and they're at the high school R. Kelly in it up. They, they there. They, oh, yeah. Oh, I know crazy. what happens, but it was disgusting. I was like, oh. But, yeah, and especially back in the 80s, because nobody really saw anything wrong with that. But now, I'm like, oh, dude, what are you doing? And then him, like, taking off her jacket and being, and licking his lips and like, yeah, you're sustained life. I was like, oh, God. Oh, disgusting. Yeah, no. A lot. 
I blame the sister, which, which was played by Regina Hall. I blame her for setting that up. That was mm-hmm. that wasn't a good fit for her sister. Yeah, because well, you knew, you know the guy, so you know what he's after. Yeah, he was a nice right. looking guy, but you know the substance behind him and what type of person he is. If you yeah. see him during during classes, you know I. She mm. knew because then she was. She said that line. Um. She was, oh, what did you tell him? And she was like, I told him you look like me. So you knew that this guy is like, you know, yeah, just gross. But I, but I will say this for this sister, even though that was wrong and gross for him to be at that dance, I think that she set that up just to be like, not necessarily as a love connection, but as a like a kind of trophy kind of thing. Like, mm-hmm. oh, you might have you know lost this game or whatever, you know, messed up this game or did whatever, mm-hmm. you know. But you're about to take a college guy to mm-hmm. your high school mm-hmm. dance, so I think it was just they like a kind of status kind of thing. They definitely thought it was cute back in the day. Um, yeah, really to like did. take an older guy like that. Mm-hmm. And I will say, I always thought it was disgusting, but when I was in high school, it was a big thing for, like, young girls to mm-hmm. be dating, like, Older GIs. Guys. Like, mm-hmm. you know, we live in a military town. <laughs> yeah, in a military town, it was a, a big thing to for these high school girls to be dating these military guys. Mm-hmm. And um, it, it was gross. And now that I'm older, I'm like, oh God, I didn't even realize how disgusting it was back then. But yeah, it happened a lot. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it was gross. Um, but yeah, and also uh, another part that I that I liked about how they put this movie together was it wasn't always ups for her. She had a lot of downs. Usually, yeah, <laughs> when you're in high school, uh, they show you the star player. You usually end up winning the championship game. She mm-hmm. lost. Usually, you think you're going to be heavily recruited. She wasn't. Nope. She was basically a late addition and mm-hmm. had to earn her spot. Everything that she got playing basketball, she earned. It wasn't anything yeah. that was handed to her. And that shows the difference between uh, how they were showing Quincy. Everything was handed to him. They were doing spreads on him. They were wondering mm-hmm. where he was going to go to college. And Monica, it was like, she's, she's a good player, but she's not going to get those same opportunities that Quincy right. got. Right. And I thought, I, I like how they, they did that. That was well about well that. Yeah, that, that was good. Like that whole juncture position between how things were with his basketball track and with hers too. So yeah, that was that was pretty cool. Um how do y'all feel about um there there was a lot of um how do I say this without y'all jumping out my throat? <laughs> Go ahead and say it. Mm-hmm. I want to hear this. There was a lot of like women tearing each other down in this movie, <laughs> putting each other down. Um, oh yeah, no, no, yeah, there were yeah women tearing each other down. Like uh, remember, um, huh? Uh, I thought you said putting th- they were putting each other down, but you said women tearing each other down. Yeah, there were like women tearing each other yeah, down. Yeah. Um, and I yeah. think that that was typical of that time period. Even I mean that happens now, of course, but like definitely back then. Yeah. But like, remember when um, Gabrielle Union's character wanted to take um, Q to the dance, and Monica's like, "Well, she's a hoe," and she's just like, "I was like, dang, yeah, yeah. it is, yeah. you know, it's okay for a woman to have some sexual agency and 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 know what she wants and goes after it." And, but Monica was like, "Oh, she's a hoe. She's sending her ass through the mail." It's like. God, dog, Monica. I, and I was like, I know that this comes from a place of jealousy because you low-key like you, but good God. But I think and it kind of went to show how she didn't have a lot of emotional regulation. It kind of went into, you know, her being a hothead 
Uh, I think that's really yes. what, a lot of what that yeah. came into. Not mm-hmm. more so. She was that was just her way of saying like, no, you know you mind. Why are you out here entertaining these other broads? Mm-hmm. And yeah, and then like Gabrielle Yu's character, she did kind of come back like at the dance and she was damn girl I know Nike made a dress so I was like okay nah, girl, don't sit down, nah. oh god it was so funny it was so funny yeah and she got down on a comment but it was like girl go sit down somewhere now. <laughs> yeah. but I think a lot of that in that time period and even today like you were saying that still goes on it, it doesn't even have to be woman on woman it's sometimes it's guys on guys especially yeah. like once she got to college and uh uh, Cedra, played by Erica Renor, uh, Renor uh, was yeah, yeah, uh, talking about Cedra's character. ripping her. Um, some of the other players were getting at her because she was the freshman, because she wasn't heavily recruited. So they they basically made things hard. Now some people you can see them looking like, uh, that's not right. Uh, we should treat her this way. Uh girl don't worry about it and stuff like that they tried to encourage her but yeah there was there was a lot of uh uh women talking down the the women on, on this on the yeah yeah yep. i have to agree um, <laughs> yeah um I, but i think it was kind of cool how we did get um Cedra's character back and almost kind of like redeemed herself how like you know they connected Mm -hmm. um because they were then on the same level Mm -hmm. they reconnected in um in italy or was it in spain yeah in europe they were in europe yeah 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 yeah, over there (laughs) (laughs) so yeah um (laughs) so yeah i thought that was that was pretty cool um and um can we oh can we talk about that sweet little window scene now that that scene stole my heart where Q's mom and dad are fighting and he goes over and it's like i i thought that was so cool uh and showed how close you can be to somebody where you don't even need to speak words and they know what you need that that was touching that was one of my favorite scenes in this entire yeah. movie because it was like you could tell that um, they had done it before. It wasn't nothing new. He like probably you know trying to bind people. Um, so she knew that when he was coming over, it was something bad, and he just needed a soft place to land, and it was with her. No, and I love that yeah. so much because I am a hopeless romantic. <laughs> but ooh, yeah, but she she was like that. Place to land. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That also kind of just brings me to my next favorite part. Was I love? Let me play for your heart. So yes, <laughs> we are gonna have to talk about that scene, so we might as well I get into you. it and let that close us out. Oh, what you mean? What you Go ahead, to, Terrell. What lead us into that disaster of a scene. Go ahead. It was not a disaster of a scene. That scene showed so much emotion. It showed, it put everything together from the time they were kids to the time they were grown ups. It put, it put everything, it was a perfect puzzle piece to finish out the puzzle. I would have to agree with Terrell. Thank you. Thank you. The place for your heart. Now, how she? Now, I will say, um, thinking, I, looking at it again, how she did it was like, um, I'm gonna just stand outside your window and look crazy right. with my basketball stuff on. <laughs> right, right. But that's what they did. It was always outside the window. Like, no. Yeah, it did take us back that to the window. Thing. Back to the window, but. But he knew he wanted to play her for her heart. Oh, yeah. He didn't want and to I make it that. easy on her. Listen, has that's anybody me, checked bro. on Tyra? Because that's all I kept thinking about. Like, that's messed up. <laughs> <laughs> that's so funny. Somebody go check on Tyra. Tyra ended up like being that. okay. She hopped on the next flight and she was gone. She was good to go. <laughs> oh, Tyra. 
I, I don't know. It, it, it was just kind of cheesy to be tell you to really? your heart. I but okay, I mean, it was a nice little wrap it. up to the movie, and it did bring back their because initial it, love of basketball. Okay, whatever. Exactly, because they both had uh, fallen out of love with basketball, mm-hmm. and they was trying to see. Well, I why don't I love this thing that I've been doing the majority of my life as because much as I was. Exactly. Yeah. yeah, that shit was cute. I don't give a damn what Kenneth said. That was the cutest shit I had ever seen. And I was cracking up with that man was crossing her up. He was giving her hell, okay? He was like, nah, you hurt me. I I love that. Boy, I love that. I, I will say it was it was a very cute scene, but it was not realistic. But okay, it but it, it was what a nice little realistic? it was a nice little bow to wrap up this movie. Why is that not realistic? Someone going to play basketball for your heart? Why? How is that not realistic? Yeah, Kayla. So you, if a man was, if if one of your exes came back into your life and was like, <laughs> Kayla, you know. Back in middle school, when we used to talk and drink juice boxes, and mm-hmm. you played basketball, but mm-hmm. I really loved you, and I want to play you for your heart. Post up, mm-hmm. bitch! Like, really? I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it. Like, come on. <laughs> they were more than just exes, though. If they had just been they exes, were. and that would have been the end of it, then I'd be like, mm-hmm. ah. But they were more than exes. They were more than friends. I would yeah. say they were soulmates. She did better I would than say me. so. Yeah, okay. Yeah, I'll give her that. She did better than me, though, because when I, you know, if you go and just put all your pride aside and be like, I'm going to play you for your heart. And then he played her so damn hard on that damn door. So like, damn, oh you want my heart. Okay, fine. Time out. Game over. <laughs> like, yeah, I mean, now, that and was, the she, but she was willing to walk away. She was like, if I, if I win, I get your heart. If I lose, I'll buy you a wedding. But he, did he have to foul the shit out of her so damn hard? <laughs> like, damn, I, I must own her heart. In that whole moment, I felt her. I was like, damn, I'm gonna cry for Monica because you could. <laughs> Monica was. I was. Ooh, I was sad for her. But when he yeah. came back, you know, it was like, yeah, yeah, this my boo. I was like, oh yeah, this is cute. This really I, 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 played street ball with her ass. I, I'm like, whoa, this, whoa. <laughs> I don't know much about basketball, but uh, it had to be done. It had to be done. Yeah, they had to clear the air because how they since that time when Quincy left school to declare for the draft, they hadn't seen each other or spoken to each other since that moment. Uh-huh. So it was a lot upset with her she was upset with him but she just wanted she wanted that thing that they had growing up that they were so close and so intertwined with each other that you could just you could the chemistry was there Mm -hmm. he he couldn't say anything else about it they were meant for each other was he meant for Tyra Banks not at all how do you know Tyra could have been a wonderful wonderful partner (laughs) No. Oh, hello. <laughs> <laughs> uh-huh. <laughs> said no one ever. No one said that. <laughs> you leave Tyra alone. I like Tyra. <laughs> but, but not not over so not late. No. <laughs> oh my God. We are not even going to have that debate. <laughs> oh God. Um, okay. Come on now. You know the people I like. Jilly from Fizz. Oh, oh Lord! <laughs> but you only like Sanaa because she was in Love and Basketball and Brown Sugar. That's why I like Sanaa too. So I ain't gonna say nothing. Sanaa is fine. Uh, yeah, absolutely. The good girl is fine. But um, I'm just saying. I think I don't know. Her and Tyra are, were two totally different people, and yeah, yeah. Um, so. But I'm not gonna put one over the other. Mm-hmm. <laughs> mm. Um, but yeah, okay. So, any any final thoughts we want to add to um 
this film before we go into our best, worst, and weirdest? Um, you know, no, I just thought it was a really great movie. It's a great watch. It's a lovely romantic movie that they should never recreate. Please don't recreate this movie. Please don't. Yeah, yeah. you know what's coming. You know we get Love and Basketball too, and it's gonna be they because they have like a little girl or something. Yeah, they had a a thought. Yes. Mm -hmm. Say what? I said they did, but please, Lord, leave it alone. <laughs> yeah, you don't need to do anything else with this movie. It's perfect. Oh, God. All right, Terrell. Uh, well, no, um, Caleb, what was your best words and weirdest moments? Uh, my best was definitely the love that they had for each other. Again, my two favorite scenes was the one where he climbed in her window and they played for each other's heart. Well, she played for his heart. I don't know what he was looking for. <laughs> um, that was my best. My worst was... Uh, um, I think my worst was when he had that little girl in his room and he really kind of showed her that I ain't even on you no more. That could have been done in such a better way. Quincy was pure trash for that. Um, and yeah, it was over like one little mistake. Like, no, it wasn't even a mistake at that. It was just, I could not be there for you, but I'm here for you now. And you got another girl up in here after all the years and things we've been through. You scarred my face. But anyhow, so that was my <laughs> worst. And I thought the weirdest was, um, what was Monica doing? A sales job? After working, or was that Quincy? No, it was Monica. Monica was doing like the sales job after coming back from the states to play um, basketball, and I was like, "Okay, I don't know." She was working at the bank with her dad. Oh yeah, when she came back in that weird suit, yeah, yeah, and I hated that so much. (laughs) I don't know what it was, but I was like, "That's not what I feel like she should be out here doing with her life," but. That that was just okay, whatever. Okay. Um, my uh was that your weirdest? Did you say your weirdest? Yeah. Okay. Um, my best worst and weirdest. The best to me was I liked um this the realistic approach to like um relationships and how they change as your life changes, like entering college is a major life change and things don't always work out the way that you want them to or that you think that they will and it causes relationships to be tested and I thought it was a real good look at how relationships can be tested and even break apart but still come back together um so that was the best the worst was um I'm sorry I'm gonna have to go back to that little um cut in the face scene (laughs) because (laughs) i thought for it to be like such a major part of the film well not a major part of the film but it was definitely a part of the film that carried from the beginning to the end like her having that scar she had it for the rest of her life that scene was not executed well um like Mm -hmm. that much blood and there's not much some damn grass there i mean it was enough blood to like feel like a Freddy versus Jason movie. And uh, it was like, okay, well, then she cut herself on. So, anyway, that was the worst. The weirdest, <laughs> um, the weirdest would probably be uh, Q's mom's wigs. Those were Ooh. terrible. <laughs> oh, wow. And they just got worse and worse. Uh, That's funny. That is yes, funny. That would be the the weirdest to me and um debbie morgan is beautiful and they it was just tragic how they um slammed those wigs down on her and put her in front of camera so yeah that was my best worst and weirdest what about you Tyrell? All right. carry us on home with your this film <laughs> uh well uh to me my best was the entire film Oh, I really God. enjoyed this film. 
I just loved how I love seeing their love grow and blossom over the years and how in the end it brought it back full circle where they ended up actually being together and starting their own family as Monica continued to do what she loved to do, which was play basketball. So that was uh, a great part of the film. The worst part of the film was that's that's gonna be difficult. I can't think of something that was that bad. Um, I guess they did. No, I don't have any worst parts. The weird part of the film. Ah! Was, <laughs> <laughs> oh no, you gonna give us the worst? <laughs> okay, uh, the worst was. <laughs> That they didn't play enough uh, Donnell Jones uh, throughout the film. Oh my god! <laughs> oh, that's funny. I definitely uh, needed some more Donnell Jones. Okay, I like Donnell Jones, so I'll give you that. <laughs> All right, what was your weirdest? The weirdest was the fact that Omar Epps looks like he's never picked up a basketball before in his life. No. Oh, <laughs> yes. Oh yeah. <laughs> His movements were so awkward. I was like, and, the, and another crazy thing about this was that uh, Sanaa Lathan had never, but she looked mm-hmm. so natural playing she does. basketball. I mean, I don't know much about basketball, but I remember while, while watching this film, I was like, wow, she really eased into this character. She looks so good. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. And I, yeah, that is weird. Did not. <laughs> yeah, and he looked like a, a robot playing. Yeah, that was odd. Yeah, yeah, good call. <laughs> oh, yeah, God. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, so what's everybody watching this week? Um Kayla, what you what you binging on this week? What you watching on TV? Oh, what am I watching? I saw what or you movies. Movies. This morning called Home Economics, and that was really, really fun. It was a little cute little show. That's um, on Netflix, was, right? It is. Um, okay. And it's actually really cute. I like those kind of quirky sibling TV shows. Mm hmm. Okay. Cool. Cool. Um, Terrell, what you binging on this week? Uh- I won't say I'm binging, but I did end up uh, watching The Eternals uh, this weekend. Mm-hmm. And uh, what's that? What is that about? Some Girl, don't talk to us. Don't talk to Goodness us. Christ. You're not one of us. She doesn't even go here. <laughs> like, what, what are these movies you talk about? Are these? <laughs> yeah. I, well, I guess it is time for me to drop my first f bomb of the ep- episode. Fuck y'all! <laughs> that is just me. <laughs> oh, the disrespect! Oh my mm-hmm. goodness, that's what I'm saying. <laughs> no, come up from you. No. Ow. Ow. <laughs> uh, well, what 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 is the Eternals about? Is that what you said? The Eternals? Yes, the Eternals. Um, it's a Marvel movie. Uh, it's basically about a group. I don't want to spoil it because I think you should watch it. It's a very long movie. I will say that. Count me but, out. <laughs> it was it was pretty lengthy. But oh, you saw it too. Oh yeah. Okay, I think I saw your post. You that you were there. You were, I was it was there. it a special screening or was it just oh, a, a normal? You just went to the movies. It was a special screening. Ooh. Yeah, but yeah, if you enjoy all things Marvel cinematic universe, uh, it was it was really good. I enjoyed it. Uh, mm-hmm. I really don't know much about the Eternals, but after watching the movie, I definitely became interested in uh, how they tie into uh, Marvel and through their books and through the cinematic universe and how uh, I believe they said. No, I'm not going to spoil it. I'm not going to spoil it. But there's some surprises in there, and uh, if you enjoy it, you'll find some some nice Easter eggs in in there. Absolutely. I feel like, though, even if you aren't a huge Marvel fan, you'll still enjoy the movie. There are some spots that you'll kind of be a little, um, you'll be a little, uh, 
clueless on because you won't know who certain people are. But I still think you could watch the movie without knowing um, some of those those things and still enjoy it. Because it was a story within itself. Yes. Mm-hmm. Okay. Okay. Count me out. So anyway. Oh, <laughs> oh Lord. <laughs> I love y'all. I do. (laughs) Count me out. Okay. That's what she said. She said, count me out. If you like, you like Angelina Jolie, Selma Hayek, you you, you might like it. Yeah. Yeah, I love Angelina. Angelina's cool. Selma's cool too. Um, But I don't like them enough to watch something that they're in. But I like them though. Yeah. Okay, well, stop talking to us. Thanks. I know, right? Okay. Sheesh. Sheesh. <laughs> no, I mean, they're cool. I mean, I'm just saying they're, they're not people. I don't have a lot of people on a, a list of, of those that like, oh, if they're in it, I'm going to watch it. The, uh, as a matter of fact, there's only two people on that list. Maybe three. And that's and who um, they Queen Latifah, okay. um, Sandra Bullock, and Reese Witherspoon. I'll, I'll watch. You know, I am a huge Angelina yeah, fan. So I resent that. So thanks. Well, I'm happy I could be here for you. (laughs) Well, I this week am been watching. I'm still watching the Good Witch, (laughs) y'all. Look, man, it's seven seasons, man, and I'm I'm at the end of season six, and I'll be entering season seven today, I guess. Yeah. Um well, how about that? <clears throat> Martha and them done lost the, the town Ruby. So we just trying to find out what what we gonna do about that. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> yeah. That's so real- what, what are we gonna do about that? Yeah, man, what are we gonna, what are we gonna, gonna, gonna do about, about that? It? And also, you know, um <clears throat> somebody stole the spices out of out of um <laughs> oh, <laughs> So we had to get to the bottom of these things, and I'm I'm committed. <laughs> so anyway, <laughs> this ain't even stuff that would happen in normal everyday life. They it's not take oh, the most boring <laughs> things that could ever happen in life. Like pick something boring that could actually happen in your life, and then make a show about it. <laughs> it's so boring, I, but I can't stop watching it. It's boring, and I I think I like it because. Well, I, I know I've said this before. Like, you don't really have to think. Like, you could you could take a, you could just run it all day and then come back two hours later and they still talk about the same thing. <laughs> or it's like wow. nothing else done really <laughs> transpired. It's just like, yeah, we still here. We trying to just put on, um, yeah, Cassie husband about to be in a getting a giant pumpkin and race across the river, and uh, so we just gonna <laughs> win, see who win this pumpkin race. Oh, that was literally an episode a couple of episodes ago. <laughs> oh, you're not joking. That was a real episode. Yeah, yeah. There was a harvest That's festival right. and uh, they had like giant pumpkins and they made it to boats and then they raced across the river. Please find something good to watch. I'm going to tell you exactly how I the show ends. You. It ends exactly how it began. Season one, episode one. <laughs> Oh, so I can just go back and watch that, and I'll know. Yeah. <laughs> and then I can be free from the grips that it has on me. <laughs> right. I, 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 I want okay. that for you. I do I really too. want that for you. Well, if the series is going to end after season seven, so I'll be free for good. Um, oh. I, I, um, I, I still have two seasons left to finish of Lost. I had to get at a break because I was lost, and um. You're know. really committed. You are really committed because I I like to give up on shows that I don't like. I I feel bad. It's so many shows on my list of like shows I need to go back and finish. And mm-hmm. I, eventually I do it because it'll bother me. But I don't like to not finish something I start. Mm-hmm. So Probably why your list is going to be forever growing. Yeah, man. It'll follow me into the ground. It will. <laughs> oh, that's funny. Yeah, I, I, I love it. <laughs> <laughs> well, so yeah, that's what I'm I'm binging this okay. week. Still on the on the Good Witch, and um, that's a uh, oh, and and I I've every now and then I've been watching an episode or two of Buzzfeed Unnatural. Y'all watch that? Any of the Buzzfeed shows? I watch 
BuzzFeed uh, True Crimes. I love BuzzFeed True Crimes. Is um <clears throat> who hosts that one? Who is two? They don't do it anymore. They started their own channel, but when it would come on, what are their names? I can't think of their names, but it's two guys, and they yeah. are. Yeah, yeah, supernatural. yeah. That's that's those are the two shows that I watch: True Crime and the Supernatural one. And okay. They are fucking hilarious. That and that <laughs> is my type of comedy. That like white quirky white guy asshole comedy. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he's definitely an asshole. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like mm-hmm. that dude, that dude bro style of comedy. Like dude, bro, yeah, bro. <laughs> Yeah, Bro, and they are hilarious. I love that show. Well, those two shows. Um, yeah, yeah. So, and I so I'll, I'll watch an episode or two of that. But yeah, that's really all I'm up to. Thanks everyone for tuning in. We hope you enjoyed the show. For bonus content and to learn more about the show, you can head over to www.sipsandscripts.com. If you have a suggestion for a film that you'd like us to talk about, leave us a voicemail and let us know. Or if you have something to add to the conversation or just to say hello, leave us a voicemail and we'll play it on the show. Make Instagram and Facebook at Sips and Scripts. Thanks again and see you next time. All right.